Can a laser cut shadow foam? Let's find out. Hey guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam. But we're not at Shadow Foam, we're at the Northwich Makerspace answering a really common question, which is, can you cut shadow foam with a laser? Now, in this video, we're gonna answer that question and we're gonna do it with three different types of laser. So, the first one, a bit unusual, but it's the first thing that comes to mind when I think laser, which is the classic laser pen. Now, this is probably the most powerful, readily available laser pen. It's the most powerful one I could find on Amazon and eBay. It's 50 watts, it's bright blue, you have to wear glasses when you're using it, and it does, you know, start fires, and it can pop a balloon and all that good stuff. So, if you've never seen one of these, there's loads of videos on the internet of these powerful lasers, and we'll try that on Shadow Foam. Second up, we've got a X-Tool M1, which is the same technology as this. It's a diode laser, 10 watt diode laser, and then from there, we're gonna to move to a big old HBC CO2 laser, which is much more powerful, and we'll see what results we get with that. So, let's start off with the laser pen. Can this cut shadow foam? So, we'll put a tool on the foam, start her up, and cut round it. And I know, because we've already tested this a little bit, it does melt the foam. So, if you've got the patience, you can get a result from it albeit scruffy, but it does give me real James Bond evil villain vibes, especially cutting in between the legs of this set of pliers. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Right, so I was at that for a good 10 minutes and it's safe to say it can cut foam, but you wouldn't want to cut foam with it because it took flipping ages to just about get a melted outline. But you know, it's pretty powerful, surprised me. Now it says it's 50 watt, but I don't believe that because it also says a bunch of other powers and it doesn't say on the listing. But we will put the link to this in the description. So you can go and check that out if you're interested in one. But it was powerful enough to melt the foam, but obviously you wouldn't want to do it. It's far quicker to just use a scalpel out of one of our cutting kits available at shadowfoam.com and just cut around it that'd be far quicker. But a laser pen can cut foam, but you wouldn't want to cut foam with it. Next up is the X-Tool M1. Let's check that out. Right, so this is the X-Tool M1 Pro. It's been sent to us by X-Tool to test out. And the main thing we want to test it on is cutting shadow foam, right? So before we start cutting shadow foam with it, let me just tell you what it is. So I'm not super technical. I quite like the old fashioned using your hands, cutting things out with a scalpel. You, you see the videos, everything I do is pretty much the old fashioned way. But I understand this. Basically, it is a two in one machine. So it's a 10 watt CNC diode. So it's not got CO2 tube. The problem with CO2 tubes is they only have a certain lifespan and they're expensive to replace. This is a diode laser, so it'll last forever basically. They've got a much longer lifespan. It's not as powerful but these machines are getting more and more and more powerful. And this 10 watt, it surprised me what it can do. It's got a blade on there, so it's a CNC laser and it's also a CNC cutter and it can cut vinyl and it can cut other materials. It can do slate, it can do plywood, it can do these little metal dog tags. It can cut through leather and card. And it's quite a quick and efficient machine. None of the jobs that we've done with it have taken more than 15 minutes. And also the efficiency and the time it takes, it does make for a really good bit of kit to add to your home workshop. So, if you want to see a full review of this and some of the other things it can do, head over to the Northwich Makerspace YouTube channel, check out that video. Uh, we'll put the link in the description. So all that being said, what we want to know is can it cut shadow foam? Well, here's a 50 mil piece of blue shadow foam. Let's stick it in there, close the lid. I've got a tool here. This is a Nipex multi-tool. I love it. This is going to be in our compact toolkit video, which is coming very soon. And if you're interested to know about that, click subscribe. Click the bell icon and that way you're not going to miss any future videos because this is one of my favorite tools and it's in my ultimate compact toolkit, which I love. So we've already taken a photo of this, which has given us a 3D outline. Now all you basically need is a DXF. That is the key. That's If you need to remember anything, it's DXF file. Now there's loads of ways of creating a DXF file. We've just basically taken a photo, imported it into Photoshop and then we've converted that into a DXF file, which just gives me an outline. We then import it into this software here, which is the Xtool Creative Space, and it comes free with the machine, and it's fantastic software. And essentially, we lay it over the top of the image. We're gonna select laser flat. We're gonna set the depth, which is 50 mil, and let's give it a go. Start, and it's telling me it's gonna take eight minutes to do that design. So yeah, let's see what it looks like.
So there we go, that is it all peeled back and it's literally done a really nice profile which is the perfect size. It's just not gone down quite deep enough. So if I wanted to go deeper though, I could just use the scalpel, go around the edge and then peel back another layer, but it kind of defeats the object really. But let's try a logo. Right, so we've done that and that is a great result. I'm really pleased with it. It's five mil, it goes through the top layer and that's what you're looking for. That way you get that contrast. It's got really great detail around these letters and I think we could probably use this for some really complicated logos. So I'm really happy with that. But now we're gonna move on to a bigger, beastier looking laser. This is a CO2 laser, let's go and check it out. Right then, so this is the big laser I was talking about. This is the HBC laser and it's the LS1290. We've had this for quite a while. You might remember it from our workshop. It used to be over at Shadow Foam and we did a video setting it all up, getting it all done right. You can go check that out if you want. And it's the same model that Colin's got. So I think he might maybe saw ours and went and got his own, but it's a really kind of versatile machine as well in the fact that it's a 1.2 meter by 900 mil bed so that's why we brought it because you can get like an eight foot by four foot sheet of anything which most things come in eight foot by four foot sizes cut it in half and slap it on here which is pretty good well cut it into thirds actually not quite half but the width is the main thing so we open it up i've got a piece of shadow foam material here which can go inside so the key thing with this is it doesn't have the camera and the automatic alignment that the x tool machine has so essentially when you put a piece of material in you have to kind of make sure it's square otherwise your, the items that you cut won't be square. And then you have to line up the laser on the top right corner of the material. So there's a little laser, a little dot, you line it up to the top right corner and then the bed on this is adjustable, it moves up and down. So you have to use a little 41 mil cube, you get one of these with a the machine but you can cut loads and it's like a little 41 mil spacer. That's basically to make sure that the focal height is set. So obviously the X-Tool one, removes all of that fuss. You don't have to worry about setting the bed height. You don't have to worry about the focal length. It automatically does that. You don't have to worry about squaring things up, but this is more powerful. So give with one hand, take away with the other. You know, it's a balancing act, isn't it? So this is a more powerful machine. Now, if we set it on full power on 30 mil foam, you'll see this happens. It cuts all the way through and it blasts out the back and you get a bit of a rough finish. And obviously that's not what shadow foam's about really. We never really cut all the way through maybe for power tools, but nine times out of 10, when you're cutting hand tools, you just want to cut so far through it and then peel the foam back. So that's a little sample test we did. Because it's a bigger machine, we'll do a few more tools. So we'll do the same set of Nipex pliers we did on the X tool, but we'll also do a spanner and a nut spinner. So that's a piece of foam, close the lid. We can load up the design on here. So it uses laser script. Now we set this at 30 speed and 40 power. We can bring in the DXF, same, exactly the same file type as we use on the X-Tool, just DXF files, and there we go. Then this is connected via USB to the laptop. We can just send that over to the machine, and then we can start it running. And that shouldn't take too long, should only take a few minutes, and we'll see what it looks like. Right, so the finish on that looks pretty good. We'll just peel that out. Yeah, and you can see it's gone down deep enough on all three items there, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's gone down about 15, 20 mil, so we can peel it out, same as we would with if we were just cutting it with a scalpel. You just push your finger down one end and then pull the foam back towards you, part, part in the layers, and you can see we've got three nice slots there, and those tools all fit perfectly. And that, I think that pretty much tells you what you want to know, which is the answer to the question, can a laser cut foam? Well, the answer is yes and you can get a fantastic result as well. But a lot of it comes down to the DXF file and how you scan the tool. So when I'm doing this with a scalpel, I get it right first time every time. I mean, there's practice to that, but it doesn't take too much practice to be able to get a perfect profile. With doing DXF files and stuff like that, you might get a slightly glitched outline or it might be a bit too big or a bit too small. So there is a little bit of trial and error to get the perfect shapes. So that can cost you a little bit of material, cost you a little bit of time, but let's say you're doing the same shape multiple times, then doing it with a laser does make a lot of sense. Also, you have to have the right power. So we saw that on the X-Tool machine, we've got 10 watts of power, and it was enough to go down about five, six mil. Now, if we did a couple more passes, 
I, I reckon we could go a little bit deeper, but you are limited because of the power of the laser. Now this is an 80 watt machine. Now HPC do do even more powerful machines. I think they do this up to 130 watt CO2 laser. So you'd be able to blast all the way through. Now one thing to note, if you are looking at getting a laser or cutting shadow foam with it, is that you have various focal lengths. Now with the diode laser, it's a focal length that you can't change basically. It's set by the diode and it's set by the machine. You can't chip, play around with that. Or at least I don't think it's recommended and I don't know how you do it. Maybe the technical ones out there will know different. Let me know in the comments if you can. With this though, with HPC, it's quite simple. You get a little spanner and you can unscrew the cap on the laser and you can buy different focal length lenses. So with this one, we did try a different lens to give us, rather than having a 41 mil gap, we had a 70 mil gap. And essentially the cone of light that comes out of the laser, when you buy it, it's set at a certain point. So the most power is at that 41 mil depth. And obviously that gives you the most power on the surface. But if you get different focal lengths, you can have a, a longer cone and you have a, a, a wider section of power. So there are other levels to this. And I think if you're interested, let me know in the comments, we could head over, HBC have invited us up to their headquarters and said we can go and spend the day with them there and learn how to get an even better result from a laser CNC. But hopefully this is enough information to show you that it is possible. There's a little bit of learning to be done. There's a little bit of trial and error to be done, but lasers can cut foam. They can cut foam really well and they can cut it safely. You've just got to make sure like everything, it's well ventilated. Now, just as a final note, Shadow foam is 100% polyethylene. There is nothing else in it, so it's entirely safe to cut because there's no fumes that come off it that are noxious. But that being said, it will create a smell and it will create fumes, which you don't want in your house or, or in your workshop or your garage. So make sure your machine is well ventilated. Ours here has a 150 mil pipe that goes to the extractor, which goes straight out the wall. But if you're using lasers and you know anything about these things, all of that is pretty self-explanatory. It's all pretty obvious anyway. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something and maybe it's gonna help you decide if you wanna buy some shadow foam to use on your laser or maybe even get a laser. So let us know in the comments if there's anything you think we've missed or you'd like us to add, because we can always revisit this video and especially if we end up going to HPC and getting some expert advice on this, we can definitely answer some more questions there. So. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's subscribe. It.